Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime, and um, today we're looking at a favorite of the GED test, which is solving inequalities. So sometimes you'll have to solve equations, sometimes you'll have to solve inequalities. And we can see here um, the directions say solve the inequality for r. So if I say I'm solving for r, that means I'm trying to get r alone. Uh, but this is an inequality, not an equation. So I'm not trying to get r alone on its side of the equal sign. I'm trying to get r alone on its side of the inequality sign. There's a few different inequality signs you should be familiar with. The less than sign, the greater than sign, the less than or equal to sign, and the greater than or equal to sign. So those are the four inequality symbols that you could see. Um, but I just want to reassure you that even though this looks like different math because these symbols are different than what we're used to with the equations, um, solving equations is almost identical to solving inequalities. Let's say that again. Solving equations is almost identical to solving inequalities. In fact, all the rules we've been learning with solving equations apply and there's only one new rule. There's one new rule that applies to inequalities. This new rule applies to negation. It applies to negation. Before I state the new rule, I want to show you um, why it works. Let me show you what I mean. So let's take a look at um, something we know to be true. Let's here. We know this. We know that negative five is less than mm, one. Of course, negative five is less than one. Because if you have, if you owe somebody five dollars, you have less money than the dude who has a dollar in his pocket. You're in debt, um, so you have less money. Okay, so negative five is less than one. That's a true statement. But I want you to imagine, most things I do, if I did something to this problem, like I added one to both sides or I subtracted one to both sides, most things I would do would keep the relationship. But there's one thing I could do here to flip the relationship, and that's negating the problem multiplying or dividing both sides by a negative. Let's try it. Imagine that I took this entire left-hand side and I negated it. I'm going to take the opposite of negative 5. I'm going to do the right, same on the right-hand side. I'm going to negate it. I'm going to take the opposite of 1. I want to see if it's going to maintain the same relationship. That's what I want to see. Well, let's take a look. The opposite of negative 5 or the negation of negative 5 is, of course, positive 5. And the opposite of positive 1 is negative 1. So really all I did was I flipped the signs on both sides. Well, you tell me, is 5 less than 1 or is 5 greater than negative 1? Of course, 5 is greater than negative 1. And take a look at how my symbols flipped. Originally, they were less than each. The left-hand side was less than the right-hand side. And now the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side. So this new rule that you need to understand about inequalities is when multiplying or dividing by a negative, and that's also called negating, when multiplying or dividing by a negative, you are going to have to flip your inequality sign. Good. That's the only new rule that gets introduced with inequalities. And like I said, all the old rules of equations are still going to apply. So let's go ahead and work this. I can see that this is um, just a two-step equation over here. I just have my r on one side, and I have two numbers to get rid of. Okay. And so when you have a two-step, well, not equation, but inequality, remember that when you're solving, you have to work Gemma backwards. Groupings, exponents multiplication and division, addition and subtraction. So when solving, you work your order of operations backwards. So I'm going to move anything that's adding or subtracting first. So I want my two, I want my r to stay, so I'm going to move away this 13 because this 13 is adding or subtracting with that 2r. Now let's talk about why I'm minusing this 13. Because a lot of students are like, hey, you shouldn't minus 13 because the 13 is already minusing. And that's not true. That minus sign right there belongs to the 2r. The 13 has no symbol in front of it, meaning that it's actually a positive 13. It in itself, in this list of two numbers, is actually a number that's adding because it's positive. The 2r is being subtracted from the 13, but that doesn't affect the 13. 
So I really want this to zero out. So knowing that this is a positive 13, if I wanted to zero out, I'm going to have to subtract 13. Okay. So the rule of solving is I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I write that minus 13 on both sides. On this side, positive 13 and negative 13 zero out just like I wanted. And then notice what I'll have left. I won't just have 2r. Since that, that minus belonged to the 2r, it will now be negative 2r. And now I did not multiply or divide by a negative. Students say to me all the time, Kate, look, you just, that's a negative right there. Yeah, but I'm subtracting here. I'm not multiplying or dividing by this negative. And so no reason to flip. This is subtraction. I won't flip my inequality sign. Okay, 27 minus 13 is 14. And I'm almost done now, but now I need to get rid of this negative 2. This negative 2 is shoved up against my R, so it's multiplying. So the way to get rid of a multiplier is to divide. So I will divide by negative 2, because I want to get rid of a negative 2. The rule of solving is I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I jump my inequality sign and I repeat the divide by negative 2. Now this, look, now I'm not just subtracting 2, I'm dividing by a negative. This is when we're going to see our inequality sign flip. Okay, so multiplying by negative 2 and dividing by negative 2 cancel, leaving me with just r. Because I divided by negative 2, I am going to have to see my inequality sign flip. It was a greater than sign, it will flip to become a less than sign. And then 14 divided by negative 2 is negative 7. And so my solution, I know it's a solution because my letter is alone, is the set. Um, all the numbers where r is less than negative 7. All the numbers less than 7 are answers to this problem. Meaning there's not just one number that's an answer to this problem, there's many. It's all the numbers that are less than negative 7. So if I had a number line with negative 7 on it, I would put a little open dot, meaning negative 7 is not included, but all the numbers less than that are. And I'll color my number line off in the less than direction and shade in my head. And I want to point out to you that this little arrow, if you have your letter on the left, since it says R is less than negative 7, this will tell you which direction to color on your number line. It points left and you're going to color left. If I had had a, an answer where it pointed right, like R is greater than 5, then I would start at 5 and go off in the greater than direction. I would go off to the right. And so those these symbols can help you know which direction to shade. All right, so there's two ways I can express my answer. I could express it with an inequality, r is less than negative 7, or I could be asked to graph that answer that still says r is less than negative 7. If you have any questions on this, be sure to ask them in the comments.